Hey guys, I'm Aaron, and today we're going to take a look at creating a model with multiple different levels of detail in one model. Model in a model detail. Yeah, that all makes sense. Uh, so in a live stream we just did, uh, you can check out, if you don't know, we do live streams here on YouTube also. You can check that video out. But uh, I created a piece of construction hardware, a truss hanger, and uh, we created it with multiple different levels of detail. So the, the highly detailed, all the screw holes and everything, a uh, lower level of detail, it was just to you know suggest that there was a connector there, and then a 2D version that would be used in layout. And we took all those different versions and put them into one component. So I wanted to hop in and just run through that last part, not the modeling part, but just how to create a component with all those, and then also how to take advantage of tags and scenes to make it easy to switch between those levels of detail. Let's check it out. Okay, so here are the three things I made. So right here, this is like I said, the, the hero model. This has all the, the features, the bells, the whistles, you know, all that stuff. So you can see there's a lot to this model. This is a great model. If I'm, if I'm doing a framing detail or something like that to show how this is connected in and how my, my uh, joist is gonna sit in here or my truss is gonna sit in here, this is awesome. This would be a great uh, thing to have. but. It's a lot of geometry for, you know, there may have 60 of these in one run of the floor or something like that. So it's okay. It's it's good to have. It's, like I said, good for details, but there's a chance I'm not going to actually want all this detail in my model. That's where this stand-in comes in. So this is two-dimensional. It's just a couple surfaces. It's the same color gray that I used over here. And uh, this is nice because it shows, you know, from a distance... Uh, if I'm looking at my model, I can see there's a connector there, but not necessarily all the geometry I have here. So this will actually keep your model light and more performant by having this on. And then the third level of detail, the lowest level, is right here. So this is kind of a, uh, this is just a 2D representation. So the idea here is this is what I would turn on if I was in layout to show that there is a hanger here. Because no matter, either of these in layout looking down, plan view from above are just going to look like little tiny lines. And if you zoom out far enough, they're going to disappear into the lines of the members anyhow. So you're going to lose them completely. This one right here, though, this does make it so you can actually see the call out for a connector. So this is the first. So we got these geometry. Each of these is, if I bring up my entity info, see each of these is its own group. Okay, that's where we're starting from. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to start by creating three tags. So um, I'm going to call it uh, we'll just call it level one, and then we'll create a level two, enter, and then we'll create another one called, you guys probably ought to crack this code, huh? Level three. All right, so now I'm going to take each of these and assign them to one of those levels. So level one will be my base level, the, the most, the simplest level. So I'm going to call this level one. This guy right here, he is going to be level two. And then our hero, our, our close-up, our special guy here, good-looking guy, level three. So now, as I turn these different levels off, they're going to disappear. So I can, you can see I can just get one of the three levels available or visible at one time. Pretty simple. That part's easy. But now what we're going to do is we're going to put them all in the exact same place. So I'm going to do is I'm going to grab this first one. I'm going to grab it by the middle point here. I'm going to move it across the red axis to line up to the middle point here. There we go. And then same thing here, this one. I actually have a line here, so I'm gonna do is I'm gonna draw a quick line like this, just to inference, because then I can grab that middle line. When I move it over, see it doesn't come with because it was never selected, but the selection stays uh, selected <laughs> and uh, leaves my extra line behind. So I can, I can inference something that's not actually coming with. So I'm gonna, again, go along the red axis and drop this again, right lining up to the middle. So that's where I want. So. There is some intention to how this stuff is modeled. Uh, this one that has no depth, you can see it is away from where the actual joist will be. It's pushed out a little bit. Same thing with these guys. These little black lines are pushed away from where they will be so they can be seen easy from above. Uh, all that's intentional. So this is actually properly lining up. Let me go ahead and erase this. Now I can grab all of these, right click, and make it into a new component. And I could call this, I would probably call this the part number, uh, the manufacturer, whatever information I wanted, I would put that info in here. 
I'm saying pretty generic here, but you'd actually want to put that specific information in. The other thing I want to do is I am going to set my axis. So I want to pick the point that I want to place this by. So I think what I would probably do, I would probably place this by the center of the back of the bucket here. And that would be the part point that I would line up. Oh, actually it won't be right here. See how these cut back a little bit? So it actually, I'm gonna use another line real quick. Draw a line at the green axis and I'm gonna snap out to here. That's the point I wanna place it by. So we'll do that again. Make component, call it hanger, connector, whatever. Set component and I'm gonna use this point right here. Click twice and create. Now, when I bring it in, it'll still use that point that was out there, even though I don't have to have geometry to have a placement point. So there we go. So with that, this, this component, this hanger component is ready to be put into the model. And I can at any point, I can come in here and I can turn my levels of detail different and see all the pieces show up, right? So that will show up in my components. So if I come over here, let's drag this smaller. Wow, that was a huge component. It's going to hold up, hold up, hold up. What's going on here? I don't need that much real estate. There we go. Shrink that down. Back to tags. All right. So these are the things I have in here. Uh, I'm going to grab this one. And when I go to place it, that's actually the one I made initially that was wrong. When I go to place this one, there we go. See how I, that snap point is at the back right there? I should probably just get rid of this. That's just, that's just going to confuse me. We better delete that. Um, right now, I'll grab this guy. And I'm going to come over here. What I'm going to do is I'm going to swing underneath. I have these just joists and a header right here. So I'm going to just go to the midpoint right there and click to place it. Now, because I only have my level three turned on, I'm just seeing putting in that one piece. So all these other ones, because they're part of it, they show up automatically. Slip down from above. Oh, perfect. So that's exactly what I want. So what I can do is I can grab this one then let's go ahead and I'm just gonna do a move a move copy from here to here and one two three four four X and then I put in a round of connectors and then again each of those connectors now has the ability to switch between levels of detail so this level of detail like I was saying before this is what I would use for layout so if I go into my camera I turn parallel projection looking straight down that's going to show like you, no matter how far back I pan, I'm always going to be able to see that little mark there. Super, super helpful if you're going to layout. Uh, inside SketchUp, the other two levels of detail, of course, can help. If I have a hundred of these things, then seeing that, you know, just this reference, oh, there is a connector there. It doesn't really matter. I don't need the detail. Perfect. Keep my, my model light and snappy. And then, of course, like I said level three. This is where I'm going to come in with a detailed view showing, you know, make sure you put these nails and these nails in, that kind of stuff. That's where I'm going to use something like that. Now, it's nice having the tags over here, but really it's kind of, it's it's not awesome to go, okay, I'm going to turn on this one and turn this off. Each time I got to do that, I got to do multiple clicks to make that happen. So what I can do if I want is I can come into scenes and I can create a new scene. I'm going to expand this down. The only thing I want to actually show is visible tags. With that turn on, I can hit plus, and that's going to be, call that one, level one. No, this is level three. And then my tags, I'll change to two, create a new scene. Oops, I, re I put the comment in, sorry. Scene one, <laughs> it is... It is, these are the details that are important when you're creating your details. All right, and this will be level two. Description. And then finally, let's turn on level one and create one more. We'll call that level one. So by creating a scene with only the visible tags checked, that's the only attribute that has been saved. So as I come up here, oops, how did I? Level three, I didn't hit enter. So now coming up here as I'm rotating through, I can just real quickly hop between those three levels of detail without having to worry about like camera jumping around. I don't have to go toggle tags on and off. In fact, I can just close my UI up altogether 
and I can real quickly jump from one another. This is not necessary, but it's a nice option depending on the number of tags you have and that kind of thing, how things are set up. This might might or might not work for you, but uh, in this case, from if I was, say I was doing just a floor layout, I might not have a whole lot more tags than, uh, than something like this. And I could include other pieces of detail in there also, but uh, yeah, an option. The important part is that I have this one component and that one component consists of all these different levels of detail, which are toggled on and off by hitting tags, or in this case, eventually, maybe scenes. So there's a lot of stuff we did in that live stream. And if you have any interest in what you just saw, you might want to go check it out. Uh, we record live streams most Fridays, and then we make them available on our YouTube channel too. So you can check that out uh, with where we created the geometry and all that. But I thought that the, the creating the level of detail was something that was worth you know, having its own standalone piece because the idea of having one component you drop in once and then being able to switch through what's actually shown in it, I think that's just a huge thing, like a huge uh, feature to have in your model. And especially if it's a reusable component, I could save this component out and drop this into any model or make it part of my template. And then it's always available to just pull in and I can view it at any level of detail without having to mess with anything. So kind of a cool option to have. Uh, that's it for today. Uh, if you like that video, click like down below. And if you haven't already, please do subscribe. You'll get notified of videos like this when they come out. And like I said, the live stream, you'll get notified about that too. Most importantly, they'll leave us a comment down below. Do you use different levels of detail in SketchUp? Do you have a different trick that I didn't touch on? Is there something specific you think would make a good video and we would show or something you'd want to learn? I like making these these videos a lot. I like me more when they're showing something you want to see, which we learned from by the comments, which I tried to inject comment in there a little too early, but we're good. See you next time.